for you to bless us this morning. Uh, we'd like to have a mind that can comprehend. And that only comes from you. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I, uh, I, I never had a computer class hardly. When I was in school, they forced me to take one. And it was uh, Computer Science 101. And I remember sitting there, and the teacher came out. He said, the first law of computer science, the first law of science in the computer lab, and it was the last law too, he said, <laughs> it's the law, garbage in, uh, garbage out. And that's what he said. Now I'm not saying, I'm just saying that's what my teacher said. I'm not saying the mind's a computer, but I'm saying what you put in affects what comes out. Physically, are we what we eat? Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, whatever you eat, you know, makes molecules of glucose, you know, you know the story, right? Are we what we eat? Yes. Mm -hmm. Physically. Are we what we eat spiritually? Yes. Just uh, one little statement. I'll read, a mind educated to feed upon trash. If you eat trash, what comes out? Sure. Trash. That's, a, that's, a, that's an unchanging fixed law, right? I uh, see in the Word of God the beauty that is there. So now garbage in, garbage out. Here's the question. Uh, truth and brain function, are they related? Mm -hmm. yeah. If the brain makes decisions, and that's just about all it does, just about, it makes decisions. I think the bridge is out, I'm sorry, I think the bridge is in, but the bridge is out. That's a wrong decision based on misinformation. Mm -hmm. And as I drive to work, I don't arrive because I'm what? Did. If you think uh, eating Twinkies is healthy and you're on a Twinkies diet, you end up in the cancer ward, a victim of what? Misinformation. Isn't that right? Because the, yeah, the information, what goes in, affects the decisions we make. Mm -hmm. So you got to make sure what you're putting in your brain is uh, you know, good information. The lady at the bank, we, we know our bank tellers very well, been banking there 18 years. Those ladies have been there. And so I'm friendly with the bank tellers. There's one of the ladies who's older, and we were talking about stress in the bank. At the end of the day, what's in the drawer has to match the computer. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, I said, well, what if it doesn't? She just looked. <laughs> I said, is that stress? She said, yes. Mm -hmm. Because there's an error somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because the uh, machine records the physical action of putting money in the drawer, and it should match. Right? Mm -hmm. So what is the truth? What is truth? Truth is Christ. Okay, now, let's say we're uh, in a forum of Buddhist or atheist. Mm -hmm. What is truth? Truth is absolute. All right, I like that. What is absolute? <laughs> All right, what is absolute? Because uh... that wasn't a simple answer. <laughs> that's, a, that's a deep answer. Like is, to think where. Okay. Some, something that is factual. <laughs> An example? Yeah. Hmm. Like uh, the sky is blue. Something that can be proven. Yeah. Well, right. Here's my example mm -hmm. for the Buddhist, used for Buddhist congregation. Mm -hmm. That is Two truth. Plus two. Okay. Because if that plus that is not that, then what is that plus that? Mm -hmm. Right? That is not true. Mm -hmm. If you think that's true, well then give me some money, I'll give you your change. It's not true. <laughs> this is true. Would you agree? Anybody want to fight about that? That plus that's that. I do. <laughs> okay, well, you'll lose. <laughs> now, now uh, fact one about truth. You can take your finger, point at it, and say, that's objective. That's objective fact. Nobody would disagree. It exists outside of your mind in an objective state, absolute, and there it is. That's truth. Number two, there's a man down the road, he changes axe handles. You know, we break the axe handles trying to split wood. I take them down there, he changes them. I was there in Thanksgiving four or five years ago. It was hot, maybe 88, 90 degrees on Thanksgiving, which usually is cold. And as he was putting the handles on, I said, man, this must be global warming. He looked at me, he said, oh man, no, no such thing. There ain't no such thing. 
<laughs> now either there is or there isn't. isn't. And what he perceives or what I perceive does not change the fact that it either is or it isn't. Mm -hmm. Is it okay to say your perceptions in no way change what is true? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I observed, I see, doesn't matter. The truth remains unchanged because who'd like to read? People hate the truth. Luckily, the truth doesn't care. Your perception does not bother the truth. Number three, how many jelly beans in the jar? One, two, three, four, five. Give me a guess. <laughs> Educated guess. 30. 30, right on the money. The prize is the jelly beans. Oh. Now, here's the problem. That's a yeah. guess. So he has no certainty. He has no assurance because it's what? Would you stake your life on a guess? No. Okay. So you might be right, but you might be wrong. wrong. So I throw one more in. The people of God will be called upon to stand before kings, princes, and rulers and great men of the earth, and they must know that they do know. There are some things I would stake my life on, but there are a whole lot of things I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Some things I really know. Is there anything you really know you stake your life on? Mm -hmm. I know one, your mother loves you. Uh, Unique loves you. Yeah. <laughs> you stake your life on that, right? Yeah. Sure, it's something you like. Now this is, uh, I don't know about down in Tennessee, but this is, uh, this is up in New York. So, you know, working there in New York, everything's high priced up there, right? <laughs> Triple the price. You know what a cup of, well, I don't drink coffee. You know what a cup of orange juice costs in Starbucks in New York City? $5. Yeah, I think it was like four seventy-five. Wow. Mm -hmm. To me, that was a shock. Hillbilly from Tennessee said, what? <laughs> Would you like a cup of orange juice? And of course, my question is, I know who's paying. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, I saw the price. Oh, okay. If I'm with Brian, Brian, who's paying? <laughs> Brian says, it's on me. I said, oh, sure, I'll have a cup. I tell you, that's good stuff. So I got my cup, and I drank it down. It was really good stuff. High in calcium, vitamin C, all these good things. And then uh, Brian says, you want to have a second? I say, why not? The first one, who's paying? Hmm. Brian says, well, I'm buying again. And I say, okay. Now, as I'm about to drink my second cup, somebody distracts me and turns my head away. And they pour in 40 drops of rat poison in my cup. Odorless and tasteless, but it'll kill 50 men in 15 seconds. Whoa. Looking back at my cup, I think it's the good stuff. Whoa. Smells good, tastes Who good. Who stopped you from it? Huh? Who stopped you from it? Nobody stopped me. I'm about to drink it down. So I drink it down. Whoa. And then what happens to me? You die. But wait a minute. Pause. <laughs> I was sincere. Yeah. Now I'm... Deadly. You're sincere. Deadly dead. sincere. <laughs> sincerely dead. <laughs> I was going to say sincerely dead, deadly sincere. <laughs> so then sincerity and truth has got nothing to do with each other. Mm -hmm. So what? You're sincere. So what? You're only junk food diet, you're sincere, you still got cancer. Right? Because uh, it doesn't matter. Truth does not heed your sincerity. Uh, Review and Herald, one of my favorite little magazines, right? Sincerity will not convert error to truth. A man may swallow poison thinking it's food, but his sincerity will not save him from the poison, right? Mm -hmm. So sincerity is good, but it's not enough. Uh, three steps to getting well. Now, let's, uh, let's reason this out. Before you take any action, you first have a thought. If I go to court and I tell the judge, look, I robbed the bank but never thought about it, what will the judge say? You're lying. Yeah, he'll give me five extra years for lying, right? Yeah. Because you don't do anything without first thinking about it. Because action is always preceded by thought. Now, you want to change your actions, you change your thoughts. How do you change your thoughts? That's that's from yesterday. You got to change your thought. Mm -hmm. How do you change your thought? By what you put into your mind. Pretty simple, right? That's my formula this morning. Change the input, right? Thinking, actions. You change the input. Now, how does it get into the brain? Through our senses. That's the only way I can think of, right? Five funnels into the mind. Mm -hmm. What you hear, taste, see, smell, and touch. Right? The five senses. And there they are. Now, a man that has never heard cursing and swearing, can he curse and swear? Mm -hmm. No way. Can a man that's been blind from birth describe what a red rose looks like? Mm -hmm. He's never seen it. You have to, it has to get in before it can come out. Mm -hmm. Another little statement. All should guard the senses. Mm -hmm. So you have to put your guard up and be careful what goes in. Nice. Right? Pretty simple. Is that a real life picture or is that television? Real life. Are you sure? Yes. Because see, I know, but I'm not telling. Any other votes? What's the difference? Huh? What's the difference? Well, yeah, good question. What's the difference? He said real life. Yeah. Television? One vote television? One real life. I'm not going to tell you. 
Clive, are you sure? Uh, not 100%. <laughs> not 100%. 95% sure. Yeah. This is real life for television. Is that real life for television? Television. Are you sure? Yeah. No, wait a minute. Are you sure? Oh, no, that was a camera shoot from Mad Long Ago. Black and white. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you're not sure. Because yeah. I know where it came from, and I know that's not right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not telling. Is that real life or television? The, the truth is, you're not absolutely sure. And you got some leanings. A real life or television? Oh, I had that game. Video. Yeah, he's got that game. All right, I agree with you. <laughs> he's got that game. All right, so we know that's... Not real life, right? Real life for television. Games. Games. We agree, right? You got that game too, right? Yeah. So, the, here's the question then. I know it's not real. You know it's not real. That's not real, and that's not real. Couldn't possibly be real. That game is nice. Okay. Couldn't possibly be real. Now, here's the question. Can you uh, play violent video games hour after hour, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, and can it have an impact on how you think? Yeah. Yes. Now, we'll stop. Pause. The question, how can looking at something you know is not real have a real impact on how you think? That's your a good question. You're two steps ahead of me. Mm -hmm. I'd like to prove that the brain does not know just what she said. Mm -hmm. It can't discern the difference. Right. I'll agree Whatever you introduce, the, the, the evidence is coming. Mm -hmm. You can agree or not agree. Whatever you introduce in your brain, your brain regards it as right. true. true. Yeah. The poison is in the cup. You get a choice if you drink it, but once it's past the lips, you got no choice. Yeah. You got a choice what you put in your water. ears. You have a choice what you put in, but once it goes in, you got no choice. This is why can it produce a an aggressive nature, belligerence, combative, more? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know it's not real. Yeah. Doesn't matter. And I'm not going to go through all these. Uh, these mass shootings, which are so common now, they only make CNN for one or two days. Then they're off the radar. Mm -hmm. But on a routine basis, somebody walks in, shoots 10, 20, 30 people dead. And the majority of these people that are doing the shooting, this is that was a naval yard. This is the guy that shot the people. He had a background in history of, guess what? Violent video games. games. Violent video games. Mm -hmm. Anybody know who that man is? Oh, oh, no. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, that's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> now, I was sitting where Amani was sitting right now, and I was uh, doing a history on some, one of our guests, real nice nice man. I won't say his name since it's being taped, but real nice. We've got to be good friends. And uh, as I was talking to him, I asked him, you know, where are you from? L.A. County. What do you do? Well, I was a teacher. Was? Well, I'm not a teacher now. I got governated. Huh? I never, huh? Governated. Hmm? hmm? Governated. What's that? I said, what's that? He said, you know. Terminator. The Terminator. Oh. I said, well, I know The Terminator. That's the last movie I went to. Uh, but I don't know the, uh, what'd you say? The Governator. I said, what's a Governator? He said Arnold Schwarzenegger. He said Arnold Schwarzenegger is the governor of California. Is that true? He was. Was he really the governor of California? Yeah. You're kidding me. For a long time. Not really? Because <laughs> the last time I saw him, he was the what? Terminator. Terminator. Subtitle, Terminator 2, subtitled what? Judgment. Judgment Day, Day right? Oh. So that was a, that's, that's a good title. Right? Revelation 14 title, 13 title. Mm -hmm. Judgment Day. Now, when I was, uh, that's the last movie I saw, Terminator 2. In that movie, he's uh, riding down the road on a motorcycle. I had a motorcycle just like that. I didn't look like that. <laughs> you know, a motorcycle <laughs> like that. And in the movie, he's being chased by 50, 100 guys on motorcycles. And he's reaching out like they're potatoes and plucking them off left and right, throwing them this way and that. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting there in the theater. What's happening to my blood pressure? Rising. That's right. How about my bronchial tubes are dilating? Right? Mm -hmm. People are dilating. Mm -hmm. There's not essential blood flow to my pancreas and spleen being shut down. Blood flow to my legs increasing. Mm -hmm. Are certain home hormones being produced and going to my bloodstream like adrenaline? Mm -hmm. All these physiological changes Taking, taking place, and I'm looking at who? Arnold Schwarzenegger sitting at a, at a swimming pool somewhere in Hollywood. He is not the Terminator, and I know right. it. Right. Wow, he got really old since then. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it happens to all of us. Yeah. Let me, let me uh, uh, go off on a tangent for 30 seconds and address that. Yeah. There was a young man here named, I won't name his name, about your age, mm -hmm. 18 years old or so. He looked at me and he said, you're an old man. <laughs> I looked at him, I said, well, see your dad over there? Because his dad came with me to the seminar. Yeah. His dad was my age. I said, look at your dad. He said, yeah, that's the way you're going to look in 40 years. <laughs> yeah, 
So look at this. This is how you're going to look soon. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. truth. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, so there he is. Now, in a sense, it doesn't matter if he's the Governator, the Terminator, or the Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. The impression on your mind is the same. Mm -hmm. Because here is my law of the mind. You can agree or you can disagree. The eyes are the lenses and the brain is the film. 2 Corinthians 3.18 And beholding, your mind is changed. Because what develops on the film is directly associated with what comes into the lenses. Or the or the or all the senses. Now, Patriarchs and Prophets, it's a law of the mind. Whatever you look at, whatever you see, taste, touch, and smell, whatever you put into the senses, you adapt to it. Remember yesterday the plasticity of the brain? As you make decisions and new pathways form, you are reshaping your brain. You reshape your brain according to what you hear, see, taste, touch, and smell. It is a law of the mind that adapts itself gradually to the subjects upon which it is trained to dwell. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm ready to start. This is kind of the introduction. This is a, a friend of mine, actually. His name is Christian Berdahl. I hope this thing's gonna work, we're gonna play. Christian Berdahl. And uh, he's into like music type things. He used to be a singer and a dancer in California. So he was in uh, the theater. And today, he, he, uh, his life got changed. He's part of the church. I'm gonna show you a short clip of a video clip. This is at the National ASI Convention, which is affiliated with you know, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And they invited him because they believed in the message he was sharing. Now, he has a, he's going to play a piece of music from a voodoo worship service in Haiti. It's very short. He's got a point to it. Now, this is very interesting. This is an article called High Tech and the Low Frequencies. Reporter Jason Sneed Sorry. wrote about the huge club and DJ scene, and he wrote about DJ uh, Lauren, or AKA Bass, Bass Nectar. Nectar. That's the number a one DJ Bass Nectar in the represents right now. the wave of DJ success, playing amazing sets to dance floors throughout North America and beyond. Bass Nectar's shows have the future primitive feel of all out revelry resulting from the tribal unity of audience involvement. Basically what it could say is what he's saying here is when this guy plays his mixes, um, it goes tribal. Now, let's listen. This will amaze you. Remember this voodoo clip? We play that one first. Our second. When the Lord, I was putting the seminar together with the Lord's direction i have a, a piece of uh, audio editing software called pro tools and i had one track and i put in this clip right here and this is bass nectar music this is las vegas this is not a jungle in haiti this is las vegas this is club stuff right i'm doing all that kind of stuff so well think about this how many, how many clubs do you think play Mozart? Well, why not? Because Mozart leaves your brain intact, this stuff doesn't, and so all of a sudden you start drinking, because that also messes with the frontal lobe. Before you know it, you're uttering perverse things and beholding strange women. Yeah. Well, the Bible says it. So God said this, play this music, now on another track, put that voodoo over it and see what happens, and does it line up? I'll point when the Buddha comes this in. This is why I play. They're what? Do I need to say anymore? That's Same. voodoo Same. laid over modern voodoo. Yeah, voodoo laid over modern voodoo. It's the same. Now, whatever you think, I'm not saying anything about music, not sitting in judgment on anything. What I'm saying is, what bass nectar is playing in Las Vegas is the same thing they're playing in the jungle in Haiti as they worship the devil. That's all I'm saying. You can play them side by side and you have to say, mm -hmm. they're the same thing. You can't say they're not. That is objective truth. They're the same thing. I listen to it, same thing. So if you're going into the club in Vegas, what are you listening to? 
voodoo music. Voodoo music. Can that have an influence on your mind? Yeah. That's all I'm saying. That guarding the senses, it might sound like some kind of old-fashioned whatever, but it's not at all. It's just being careful what you put in because it affects what comes oh. out. And so you could name 10,000 things. I used one example of one subject in 25 seconds. So uh, I knew a Pew Research poll. This is on uh, Google searches. A new Pew Research Center. I can't even read that. Anybody may buy glasses. They can. Who can read that? A new Pew Research Center survey clearly illustrates the rapid rise of the post PC devices. According to the survey, 68% of adults in the United States currently own a smartphone, up from 35% four years ago. So a post PC device, I guess, is smartphone, uh, I don't know, pager, but I don't know what, a, what all the post PC devices are. iPad, I don't know. But I think the common link between post PC devices, they all can link to the internet. Smartphone links to the internet. Now here are a couple of statistics. How many American children have a, uh, that's, that's adults. These are the young folks. Mm -hmm. Children under eight, and there's several studies done, they all say about the same thing. Approximately how many children under eight carry a smartphone? 75%. Mm -hmm. Now we'll go down to children under four. Children under four, about how many have a smartphone? 75%. We are a wired in generation, right? Mm -hmm. In Asia, certain parts of Asia, it's even uh, much higher. You know, they've wired to whole cities. So you don't have to worry about, you know, here we can't find a signal <laughs> running out in the woods. But whole cities are wired in parts of Asia. And uh, so 75% of four year olds own smartphones, surveys, fine. Now, if I were a man, young man, you know, 25, 30, thinking about getting married, what's a good, a good, a good thing to do is to, if you're thinking about getting married, a good practice would be to, to um, communicate. Are, are there, well, there's a young man thinking about getting married. <laughs> <laughs> what, what should we encourage him to do? Number one, you ought to what? All right, that's good, right? Pray, that's okay. Pray. Brian will accept that. Number two, he ought to do what? Talk to people. I call that counsel. counsel. Is it good to get counsel? Mm -hmm. Brian tells me he's getting counsel from a four-year-old and eight-year-old. What do I say? So Brian's crazy. Brian's crazy. Because someone four years old and eight years old, they haven't developed their reasoning power. They don't have mental stability. They don't have maturity, right? A four-year-old and eight-year-old. In other words, what you get from a four-year-old and eight-year-old is not going to make sense in this world we live in because they haven't had the experience. Mm -hmm. Now the uh, words that are searched for most on Google, any guesses before we read it? Porn. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. Uh, out of the top ten, triple X, porno, free porno, porn. <laughs> yeah, we live in a free country but censorship is going to stop this paragraph from going very far. Let's put it this way, the keywords, sex, you can read the numbers, mm -hmm. porn, free porn, and porno, <laughs> pretty much blow any other keywords out of the water. The amount of exact match volume for these four I terms alone is, you know, 23 million times a month. Mm -hmm. Now, I was surprised, you look at the top 10, you see what's in the top 10. And one of the things that's like number four, number five, was XXX. And I thought, <laughs> why do they put that in there? It's easy, because a four-year-old can't spell porn, but they can hit XXX. Mm. X, X. Oh, no. Yeah. Now, is, uh, are we in the midst of a great crisis spiritually mm -hmm. in this country? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonder why. I'm just saying, I wonder why. Now, the divorce rate outside the church is, the Barna Research poll shows, roughly 52%. The same poll shows divorce rate inside the church is roughly 52%. Correct. Matthew 5, Matthew 19. There are no grounds for getting divorced except adultery. adultery. Now, a uh, man forgets to lock his door. The wife walks in, looks over his shoulder. She sees him watching that kind of thing. Does she know, she doesn't understand brain chemistry, neurophysiology. Does she know intuitively, innately, instinctively, 
that this is having an effect on that man's mind. mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Matthew 5, 28, he's already committed adultery in his uh -huh. heart. But he didn't do anything. He just looked. Mm -hmm. They say in parts of uh, Brazil, it's okay to look, but not to what? Touch. Touch. Well, that doesn't make sense in neurophysiology. Because when you look, it makes a pathway that prepares you to whatever it is you're doing. So I know this is, this is a, kind of a tough class this morning. But we live in a tough world. Divorce rate is skyrocketing. Homes are broken. When I was, Darlene was divorced, I was divorced. All my friends were what? Divorced. And I thought, I wonder why. Cause and effect. Proverbs 26, 2. The curse doesn't come. And divorce is a curse mm -hmm. without a cause. Mm -hmm. And I thought, hmm. So Proverbs 14, 12, rewritten in John 10, 10. There's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is the way of divorce. John 10, 10. The thief comes but to kill, steal, and divorce. Mm -hmm. And what man is joined together, Genesis 2, 24, let no man part asunder. I'm saying it can even affect the marriage relationship, what we're putting into our eyes, our ears, our nose, and all the different things. Mm -hmm. And I'm not in no way trying to suggest what you should put into your eyes, your ears, your nose, your mouth. But in a very real way, I'm suggesting that whatever you choose will affect what comes out of your mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to have a mind. So what we're doing in this 10-part series is we're studying seven actions that we can take to regain stability in our thinking. Seven laws for seven principles. We haven't gotten to the first one yet. This is just the introduction. Seven laws of thinking. Like uh, Alcoholics Anonymous. They have how many steps? Bad steps. How many? Bad. Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. You're close. But yeah, 12 steps. <laughs> And that's okay, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, they uh, believe in a higher power and they're not quite as, you know, focused in, mm -hmm. but I got seven steps and they're all from the Bible. Seven steps to Romans 12 verse 2, be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, renewing, of, your renewing of your mind. Seven steps, very clear, plain <coughs> Bible steps. The Bible said step one. Step two, step three, four, five, six, and seven, and in your mind. By the way, seven is a nice complete number, right? Mm -hmm. If you have these seven, you'll have stable thinking. But you got to have all seven. Mm -hmm. Now, you say, what if I got six? I say, if I have a gun with seven bullets and I shoot you just one time, are you still dead? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so you have to have the whole package if you want the, the result. Mm -hmm. uh, that is our... Uh, Tomorrow, we embark on the subject of physical factors. How certain things in our physical life can affect our spiritual life. And in closing, let me just give one example. It's the best one I can come up with. This was uh, years ago. Had a nice lady. She came to our program. A really nice lady up from Michigan. She was a church member, a Christian. And she came. And she's uh, sitting on the sofa. Back in those days, we had the lecture thing up on that end. I came in and sat down. Now, I knew the uh, history, the medical history of the people that come to our program. So I knew her background. The background was she'd had uh, breast cancer. <coughs> it had the breast removed, something akin to a, a radical mastectomy. Had the breast removed. Had undergone chemotherapy. All her hair had fallen out. So she was wearing a wig when she was in the thing this morning. And that lady was, I don't remember, 43, 44, 45, something like that. I sat down, and there she sat, and I looked at her. And uh, a really nice lady, too. Nice lady. I looked at her. Now, before I even had to say one word, this woman had some challenges in her life, right? Yeah. Uh, what kind? Were they, they yeah. mental? Were they physical? All right, yes, was it physical? Spiritual? Or, or, spiritual? Mm -hmm. Mental, physical. how about physical, mm -hmm. emotional, mm -hmm. social, everything. There's some, going to be some readjustment in the home. Mm -hmm. The wife came home different. Is there going to be some readjustment in every part of life? Mm -hmm. And there she sits. If her problem is all those things, Clive named many, right? If her problem is all of those, the answer has to be what? All, all of those. Yeah. So she needs an answer that addresses each problem. Secular medicine can address only one, mm -hmm. the physical. And in many cases, not that well. Mm -hmm. Because they can help you to get better. I'm sorry, they can help remove your breast if you get cancer. But to try to prevent it, the world does not do so well. Mm -hmm. Because breast cancer is on the rise. Mm -hmm. 
and it's a very real threat to the family, right? Not just your physical health, but when you go into the deathbed, I almost died once, and Darlene was praying, Lord, don't let, don't, don't take him, don't take him. I thought she doesn't want to lose her dishwasher. <laughs> no, come on, it has an impact on the home, right? Sister uh, Katrine doesn't want to lose her dishwasher. Makes no sense. It's an upside down world. If you don't want an upside down brain, you got to keep the seven laws of mental health, I'll pray. Father in heaven, bless us this morning as we try to ascertain that which is true from that which is false. Give us, a, how can we guard our senses if we don't know what's true and what's not? Please, give us a right mind as we really get into the uh, meat of the subject. I ask it in Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.